Today's lesson is on inverses of cubic and cube root functions. Now, we have done inverses on every function we've done this whole year, so hopefully the method looks familiar, even though the math will be different than what we've done before. So if you remember the steps, and hopefully you do, we substitute y for f of x. Then we want to switch our x and y values, or whatever the variables are, we solve for y, we use reverse PEMDAS, so reverse order of operations, and then we rewrite the new equation and re re we replace y with f inverse of x. And I give us some funky problems here to practice, but hopefully you have the steps and then we can work through these problems. Um, they can be a little difficult or a little long, I should say, not so much difficult, it's just kind of long, so I'm going to try to write a little smaller, but we'll see since I'm writing on an iPad. But our first example, h of n equals 1 plus the quantity n plus 1 cubed. So we change h of n to y equals 1 plus n plus 1 cubed. Now, that's step one. So step two, we switch our two variables. Normally, what we've done is x and y, but here it's going to be y and n. So I'm going to make n, so actually I'm going to do the second step in a different color. We're going to set n equal to 1 plus y plus 1 cubed. Step three, solve for y. So we're going to solve for y, we'll use black. So that means we need to get everything on to the left hand side. So first we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So we're going to have n minus 1 equals y plus 1 to the third power. Now how do we, if you remember, to get rid of something cubed, or to get rid of something squared, we take the square root. To get rid of something cubed, we have to take the cube root. So then we would take the cube root of both sides. So that leaves us with, on the left-hand side, cube root of n minus 1. And on the right-hand side, that third power goes away. So we just have y plus 1. And so then all we have to do is subtract 1 from both sides. So we get the cube root of n minus 1 and then minus 1 equals y. And then our final step is to rewrite it as in, an inverse function. So normally we say f inverse of x, but so for the last step because we have h of n, it becomes h inverse of n is equal to the cube root of n minus 1 minus 1. That's your final answer. So you can kind of look at it all there. All right, number two, another one that kind of looks a little funky because we have it, it's a fraction, and we have negatives. Write small. That's my first recommendation. Okay, first step, we just change f of w. I just change it to y equals, and then it's negative 2 minus the cube root of 4w, all of it divided by 2. That's step 1. Step two, we'll go in reverse order this time, switch the y and the w. So we're going to have w equals negative 2 minus the cube root of 4y, all of it over 2. And now we have to solve. So when we're solving, we're going to get everything over to the left-hand side. So the first thing we need to do is 
multiply both sides by 2. So we have 2w equals, these 2's cross out, negative 2 minus the cube root of 4y. Hopefully you can tell it's 4y. Alright, now we want to get rid of this negative 2, so we have to add 2 to both sides. So we just have 2w plus 2 equals negative cube root of 4y. And before I can cube both sides, I need to get rid of that negative. So I'm just going to multiply both sides by negative 1 or just stick a negative out front. So I have negative 2w minus 2 is the, equal to the cube root of 4y. Okay. So it's just very tedious, this problem. To get rid of something, the cube root of something, we cube it. And we do that to each side. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So that means we have over here, negative 2w minus 2 raised to the third equals 4y. And of course, we have to divide by the 4. So we have negative 2w minus 2 cubed over 4 equals y. And then there's still one more step. We have to change the y to f inverse of w. We have to write it as an inverse function. All of that. So, there is our final answer. That one, it was a lot of work. But you can kind of see, if you go step by step, you can get through it. All right, number three, f of x equals the cube root of negative x minus three. So this one, more set up like normal, f of x. So we change this to y equals cube root of negative x minus 3, that's step 1. Our step 2 will be switch x and y, so x equals the cube root of negative y minus 3. I have a feeling these negatives are going to mess this up a little bit, but you'll get the hang of it. Step 3 we need to solve for x, or solve for y, excuse me. So we have this side, so we can immediately cube the left, the right, both sides. So we have x cubed equals negative y minus 3. And so then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I have x cubed plus 3 equals negative y. Get rid of that negative, the negative, divide everything by negative 1, and you get negative x cubed plus 3 equals y. And then step 4, rewrite it as f inverse of x is equal to negative x cubed plus 3. Okay, that's number 3. And then one more, just trying to give you a bunch of options. And most likely the homework or problems you will do will be simpler than these ones. g of n equals negative 2 times n minus 2 cubed. I'm still going to use y. So y equals negative 2 times n minus 2 cubed. Switch y and n. So n equals negative 2 times y minus 2 
cubed. Step three is solve, solve for y. So we need to get rid of this negative two by dividing by negative two. So that means we have negative n over two equals y minus two cubed. So now we have only a cubed by itself. So we take the cube root of both sides. So we end up having the cube root of negative n over 2 equals y minus 2. And then we add 2 to both sides. So negative n over 2 all inside the cube root plus 2 outside the cube root equals y. And then the last step, rewrite it. We're going to write it as g inverse of n equals the cube root of negative n over 2 plus 2. All right, so that is finding inverses of cubic and cube root functions. Good luck, and please let me know if you have any questions.